Good evening everybody and thank you so much for asking me to share my testimony this Sunday evening at Bally Sullen Independent Methodist Church. My name's Lisa Carnahan and I got saved just over three years ago on the 7th of June 2017. Um, I'll just I'll give you a bit of background about myself. I had a really lovely childhood, a lovely upbringing from a very lovely family but um, my family didn't go to church, so we're totally unlearned in the things of um, of the Lord. And anything I would have learned about the Lord would have been in primary school and Sunday school that I would have went to on and off. I'm married to Robert. I've been married for nearly 13 years and I have four beautiful little daughters. Connie is four, Marnie is six, Bobby is nine and Isla is ten. Um, so really this, this story is about how the Lord Jesus Christ pulled me out of such a horrible, horrible pit that I had got myself into. Anything I would have learned about the Lord Jesus Christ would have been again in school and primary school and in Sunday school and it would have been stories that talked about baby Jesus in a manger and stories like that but the story well the sorry the Lord Jesus Christ that I met three years ago um there's a verse in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 and it says the Lord is a man of war the Lord is his name and this is the Lord Jesus Christ that I met um I would have always been into things things that would make me be better things that would fix myself um Whenever I was pregnant, I was advised. I would have took advice from everybody and anybody. So whenever I was expecting, I was advised to go to baby yoga, pregnancy yoga, after I had my baby yoga to get your fitness levels back. At a breech baby, I was recommended to try reflexology. Um, I would have went to chiropractors. I would have done mindfulness. I, like I would have, I would have done anything to try and fix myself. Um, but I, I didn't know that the, 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 only per, the only person that can fix you is the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, I, I would have, I had this, at this time, I would have had pains in my hands and feet. And it went on for a good couple of months. And I'd phoned the doctors and I'd explained what, how I was feeling. And they wanted me to come in for blood tests. And at that time, then I was speaking to my friend Lee, who again, she would have been always into alternative therapies and things. And, and I was just telling her how I was feeling and that I had to go and get blood tests done. And she explained to me that I should try um, going to her friend that she knows that, and she does recce. And she says, I think it's just your energy. You just need balanced out. Your energy just needs balance because you're a busy mummy and you've had all these babies very close together. And I was like, do you think so? And she said, yes, you know, phone this lady. So I phoned her um, and she sounded lovely on the phone and made an appointment. And I went over to a lovely wee therapy room that she'd made above her garage. And I sat and I was explaining to her that I had pains in my hands and feet. And I told her as well that, you know, I'm not into the kind of the hocus pocus that my friend would be into because she would have been, she would have looked at fortune telling and tarot cards and things like that. And I knew that that was wrong. And so I said to this lady, you know, I believe in God. And she says, well, I can see how that you're nervous. And normally before I would do anything, I would say a prayer into myself, but I'll say it out loud. That'll give you peace of mind. And she prayed and she prayed to God. But I didn't know that you needed to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that that was, I was happy enough with that. And she done her recce and um, the pains in my hands and feet went. And she said, you know, you could do this. You could, I could teach you how to do this. And I said to her, listen, I'm a stay at home mommy and I have no aspirations to go out and start my own business. I'm very happy doing what I do and I know that I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. And uh, she said, but you could do it, you know, to your children and you could do it to your husband as well. You know, you could just do it to your family. And I thought, right, okay. So yeah, I took her advice and, and she taught me how to do recce. And uh, so after she explained to me that you needed to do it to yourself, um, I think it was for one week or two weeks, um, so I came home and I was 
doing Reiki on myself and it involves really just putting your hands on your head and on different parts of um of your body so i done that and this one day um it was probably about maybe five days into it and it was a sunday and i was up in my room and doing practicing the Reiki and as crazy as it sounds my hands felt like they wanted to move over my body by themselves and it totally freaked the life out of me and I came downstairs and I phoned the girl and I said listen this sounds mad but my hands feel like they want to move over different parts of my body by by themselves and she was like that's totally fine that's fine that's kind of all part of it and I says but it doesn't feel right and she says, well, you have free will and you can stop at any time. So I stopped. And uh, a while later, maybe it was a week or a couple of weeks after, Robert and I were going to Edinburgh to visit his auntie who had been sick. And they were having a bit of like a family reunion. So we travelled over to Edinburgh and um, all of Robert's family, all of his family was there. And I was sitting talking to my sister-in-law and... I can't even remember, I don't even know how the conversation came around, but we were talking about God and um, she said, you know, I've I've tried reading the Bible and I, I stopped after I read about Cain and Abel because she has four daughter, four sons and she says I stopped at the at the murders and stuff, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it and she said, um, I quite like the thought of, you know, Buddha because it's be nice and, and be kind and um and I said, Well, you know, the the commandments it says in the in the Ten Commandments that you, you shouldn't worship another god and I said I wouldn't even have a Buddha in my house. Little did I know that I had so broke those commandments of worshipping other gods. Um so that was fine and that night Robert and I went to bed and Robert went straight to sleep and I sat up and I just didn't feel, I just didn't feel myself and um, it was about two o'clock in the morning and I just woke Robert up and I said, Robert, we need to get out of this hotel, we need to get out of this place, there's bad in here and Robert being the good husband that he is, he'd done what he was told and I got up out of bed and, and I said, don't, you don't need to pack your suitcase, you don't need to pack anything, we just need to get up and we need to get out of here, there's bad in here and well, we left that hotel and I literally came running out of that hotel and before I knew it, I was on my knees and I couldn't speak and all I could say was ho, ho, ho and Robert was standing looking down at me and I was looking up at him and I didn't know what was happening but I was on my knees and I could not speak and um after that, I, I said to Robert, you need to phone your mum because his mum was staying at his aunt's. So he phoned his mum in the middle of the night and they came round and they collected us and they took us to um, his Aunt Marie's house. And we went to bed and the whole night I couldn't sleep and my skin was crawling the whole night. And all I could do was say the Lord's Prayer because it was the only prayer I knew. So I just prayed and prayed and prayed the Lord's Prayer. And I knew that something really bad had happened, but I didn't know what. And um, I just didn't know what was happening because it was just so, it was just so crazy. Um, so the next day we uh, went to the airport. I just couldn't wait to get home. And as we were getting on the plane, I said to Robert, you need to pray for me. He was like, right, okay. And I said, something really bad's happened, Robert, and I don't know what. I said, but you need to pray. And he was like, I will, I will. And like, we wouldn't have even spoke about prayer or anything like that before. Um, so we got home and it was on the, on the Sunday evening. And we got home the next day, Robert went to work. And I just carried on as as normal and brought the, the two big girls to school. And I came home. And whenever it came time to go and collect the, the girls from school, they I, I was in the car with the two little ones and I was driving and I started having these thoughts in my head that I needed to leave Robert and that he wasn't any good for me. And I knew right then that something had happened because I knew that those thoughts 
it was impossible for those thoughts to belong to me because Robert and I were in P1 together and we were been going out since we were 16 years old. So I knew that those thoughts couldn't belong to me, but I didn't know what was going on. And in my whole world, I am from Finnegan, I'm from Belfast, and in my whole world, I didn't know one praying person. The only one praying person that I knew was my friend, Kleina. Always would have talked about her mum, Nula, who prays and she prays for this and she prays for that. And I worked with Kleena and um, years ago. So I phoned Kleena's house landline and praise the Lord, Nula picked up the phone. And, and I said, Nula, this is Lisa here. This is Kleena's friend. And I'd only met Nula probably three times in my life. And I said, Nula, something really bad's happened to me and I need you to pray for me. And she says, well, you know, I'm, I'm minding the grandchildren. And I said, well, I'm on my way over with my four girls. And I drove straight over to um, Kleena's house and literally fell into Nula's arms. And I just didn't know what was going on. And Nula prayed for me and as she was praying for me, I could feel my shoulders drop. And when she stopped praying, I could feel my shoulders rise up. And uh, so Robert was phoned, Robert was called and um, he came over to the house. And my mum and dad, they came up to Kleena's house. My whole family literally dropped everything um, because out of all our family, me and Robert are the, we're the, like the logic people with, you know, the the logical people. Um, so they like dropped everything and they they came home and they, they could see the state that I was in. So I went, we all went home to my house and I remember standing in my sunroom and I remember standing, looking at my mum and looking at my dad. And looking at my husband and just thinking all your love and all your money is not going to help me right now all the love and all the money in the world is not going to help me right now but i didn't know what would i didn't know that i didn't know to call upon the name of the lord jesus christ and now shall be saved i didn't know any of this i didn't know anything i just knew that something really bad had happened and um and i needed fixed so my dad was like <clears throat> right, let's we'll phone the doctor and I said, Yes, let's phone the doctor. I need I I need fixed. So the doctor came the next day and she took one look at me and she said, This girl needs assessed. And I was very happy with that. I was like, Yes, let's go get assessed, let's get this sorted out. So I went to the White House in Lisburn and seen a, a lady and praise the Lord, that lady was a Christian because I was telling her exactly everything that I'm telling you tonight. And if that had been a different kind of psychologist, who knows what could have happened. But um, by law, I think the only thing that they can ask is, how's your faith? And she said to me, how's your faith? And I says, well, I've been praying to God and I know he's gonna help me. I know he will, because I've been praying. I'm praying to God. Um, so she just said to me, listen, just go home and rest. Um, so I did, I went home and arrest. My mum came out of work, my dad came out of work, Robert came out of work. They took over all the, the things to what a stay-at-home mummy would do. And um and I rested for a couple of weeks. Um Robert done the school runs and took them swimming and done everything else that, that needed to be done. Uh and after two weeks then my mum and dad went home and Robert went back to work and I got back on the, the circuit again of the mother and toddlers and the waiting rooms of ballet and the waiting rooms of, of the swimmers and this lady Nicola that had been talking to you on and off for quite a while in the ballet waiting room was telling me all about this holiday that she'd been on in Israel and I said to her like why would you even why would you go to Israel and there's wars going all over there and she says well we're Christians and I was like right okay and I said can I ask your opinion on Reiki and and yoga and she said to me well they're not of god and i said well i know that they're i know that they're wrong but i didn't know and she says well whenever you walk with god you know that and i thought like what does that even mean when you walk with god I, i'd never heard that kind of talk before so um i kind of told she said it's something happened and i said yes and she says maybe you might need a wee bit of deliverance and I said, well, what's deliverance? And she says, it's whenever you go and people will pray for you. 
I said, Nicola, that's exactly what I need. So she says, I'll get you a number. So probably about four weeks later, she, she came with this number and she says, do you still need this number? And I said, well, no, like I feel, I feel okay, but I'll take it anyway. And that was on the Wednesday and by the Sunday, or sorry, no, by the, the, that way, the Saturday it was, then I lifted that number and phoned and a wee man called Jim McTurnan picked up and, and I was crying down the phone to him, telling him everything that, that was happening. And he made an appointment for me to go over to Abbott's Cross Congregational Church. Um, so I was talking then to my friend in the mother and toddler group, Michelle, and because I hadn't been there for, for ages and I was talking to her and I said, Michelle, I'm going on Wednesday for uh, deliverance. And she says, oh, what's deliverance? And I says, well, I'm not really sure, but I know I need it. And she says, well, I'll come with you. And I said, right, OK. So the two of us went over to Abbott's Cross and went into the church and we met the three most godliest prayer warriors of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we sat down and I was a total mess. Like I had lost so much weight. I can even look at myself in the mirror. My eyes, my very eyes scared me. Um, and I sat and, and told him that I just feel horrible all the time and I, I, I just feel yuck and there's just this feeling that it just won't go away. And so they um, sat me down and they explained that what that feeling that I was feeling is called sin and that nobody can take that away but the Lord Jesus Christ. And they explained the full gospel message to me very simple and very clearly that the Lord Jesus Christ came here on this earth and he died for me, for Lisa, he died for me. And three days later, he was brought back to life for me to take away my sins and that he's alive and that he sits in heaven and, and he prays and he intercedes for you. And like the minute I heard that, I knew that that's, he was what I needed. So they explained to me that you needed to repent and you need to repent of your sins and all like this was all new talk to me and so like repent is to turn from and i had already turned away from all that that scarred the life clean out of me so i had turned away from all that but i didn't know that i needed to turn to the lord jesus christ because i didn't know about the lord jesus christ so as soon as i heard that i had turned from my sins and i turned to the lord jesus christ and i repented for my sins and well what happened next was just it was just incredible. Like the Lord came, he came just like that. As soon as you repented, he just came and totally took it all away. And all I can describe it as was like, he just literally came in and took all that yuck and disgust and sin and just threw it out at such a force. And like, I felt it, I, I felt it. But Michelle, Michelle seen it with her own eyes, like she was there and she wasn't saved at the time either. And it was just absolutely incredible. Like after that ministry, after that prayer ministry, I was like, well, like, what do I do now? And Raymond, um, it was Jim and Anne and Raymond. Raymond said to me, you go out girl and you get yourself a Bible and you get into the word of God. So I did. Michelle and I, we, we were driving home and I, I was like, Michelle, did I, I just got saved in there. She, and she was like, yes, you did. So we went home and we, Robert, he couldn't, he couldn't come, his nerves wouldn't let him. So we came home and we sat down in the kitchen and with a cup of tea and Robert was like, you know, what happened? And Michelle was sitting there and I was sitting there and I was like, Robert, Jesus is alive. He saved me tonight, he saved me. And he was like, what? Oh. I said, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive and he saved me tonight, Michelle. Tell him. Michelle was like, she's telling you the truth. So the next day I went out and I bought myself a Bible. I went to the Faith Mission bookshop and bought myself a Bible. And the wee lady said to me, start reading at Matthew. So I came home and I opened up Matthew. Well, I started reading and I, I was like, Robert, where are you here? So there was verses that I, I haven't stopped reading the Bible since. So there was a verse in um, Mark chapter 9, verse 14. And it talks about how Jesus casts out a demon from a boy. 
And I was like, Robert, that's like that. As I read that, that is exactly what happened to me. The difference is I couldn't see the Lord, but like I could feel him. He, he was there and he'd done exactly for me what he did to this wee boy all those years ago. And then I read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And I was like, well, that's true because what he done all those years ago, he done for me like yesterday, really. And then I read Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. <clears throat> and I was nearly destroyed for the lack of, lack of knowledge that I did not know the word of God. I did not know about the Lord Jesus Christ. I did not know about the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't know any of this good news. So I got myself deeper and deeper and deeper. I read Matthew about the narrow gate. And I was like, I have... I found this narrow gate. I am not on that wide, broad road anymore. I have found this narrow path. And then I read um, about the wolves and the sheep's clothing. And as I read that, I thought, you know what? I have met those wolves, but those wolves don't look like wolves. Those wolves look like wee sheep. They look nice and they wanna help you and they wanna do good for you, but really, they're wolves. So I started reading the Bible and after that after that deliverance ministry, I have a caravan in Bally Walter. We went down there at the end of June and I kept studying and I couldn't get enough of, of the word of God. And I said to Robert on the way home from the caravan, I need to know more about this Jesus. I need to know more. And it just so happens that there's a Bible college around the corner from where I live. So I said, Robert, would you mind if I enroll and, and go to an evening class? And he said, no, that's fine. So I started uh, the Baptist Irish Bible College, the Christian education course. And uh, how it works is there's like three subjects every term. And of course, the term that I decide to start is they're talking about cults. And I'm sitting in a class full of Christian people, I had to ask the girl beside me, what does it mean to witness? Because they were using language that was very new to me. Um, so she explained, it's when you tell people about Jesus. And I was like, right, okay, know what that one is now. So this pastor then was talking about um, the cults and one of them was about New Age. And he said, does anybody have any uh, experience of New Age? And I'm sitting there and my heart's going a dinger. And I thought, I can't sit here with my shots. So I put my hand up and I spoke for probably for about 30 seconds through a lot of tears. Um, just that it's real, you know, it's real. People might say, oh, it's a lot of rubbish. It's very, very real and it's very, very dangerous. And um, after that, anyway, a man from the class, Robbie Boyce, he came up to me and he said, I, uh, I think you should share your story. You know, with people, I think it's very relevant and you should share it. And I was like, Robbie, I'm only here to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. I am never going to talk about what, what happened to me. It's, I never, it was totally traumatic. I never wanted to speak about it again. But when you give your life to the Lord, he takes your life and he turns it all around. And everything that happened that was bad, he will turn it around and make it for the good of his purpose. So um, I said no. And that was in September and then the April when the, the course was wrapping up, they said, well, he, Robbie said to me, will you think of, please come our dress mission hall and share your testimony? And I said, right, OK, I will. So I came home and wrote out my testimony and I sat in the end of my bed and I prayed and I was like, Lord, I pray that you stir the hearts of your people to know what mighty, mighty, mighty God that you are, that you are the God that saves. You are the God that saves sinners. And uh, so I went to our dressmation hall, nerves up to 100 because I would be quite a shy person and private. So standing, talking about the most personal thing that ever happened to you in your life is nerve wracking. So I said to Robbie, would you mind recording this? Because uh, Robert's nerves wouldn't let him come. He says he would stay at home and pray because he gave his life to the Lord after um, all that deliverance ministry as well. and. Um, he Robbie says right okay so I stood and shared my testimony didn't realize that it was video recorded thought it would just be voice recorded and he said at the end would you mind if I put it on Facebook and I said no work away I don't really do Facebook so he put it on Facebook and that 
prayer it just shows you our lord is a lord that answers prayer he took that prayer and he is still answering it right now this very minute he is still answering that prayer that i prayed because so many people have seen it and so many people know that our lord is a mighty mighty god he saves so a lot of people have seen that and um and now this is what the lord has me do he has me go round to so many churches and and stand and sing the song of deliverance of the lord jesus christ like he's alive he's alive today and he's still working in the hearts of his people and he's still saving people and even in this lockdown he still has his message his gospel is good news he has it going now across the facebooks and the youtubes and and everything else like how good is our lord so that's as nerve-wracking as it is for me to stand up in a pulpit and talk it is the very least that i can do for what he done for me the very very least thing that i can do because he saved, he saved me, he saved me spiritually and he saved me in my life right now. He saved my wee girls because who knows what kind of mummy that they would have had, who knows what kind of wife my husband would have had he not intervened in my life. Like I, I shudder to think, but now he holds me in his perfect peace and anything that comes at me, he brings me through it. You know, we I've give our marriage to the Lord, our parenting to the Lord. We give it all over to the Lord. And when he has it, that's whenever he makes it all good and right and in order. Um I could talk all I could talk all night until my stories run, runs down on my phone about what the Lord has done for me and for my family. It's just incredible once you give your life to the Lord like he takes it and he makes it new and he, he makes you i just want to serve the lord now that's that is what i do i serve the lord in any way that he has me serving him and today it's sitting up recording uh my testimony to send it to the belly cell in church and just i'm going to finish on a psalm and it's psalm 40. i waited patiently for the lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry he also brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the mary clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps he has put a new song in my mouth praise to our god many will see it and fear and will trust in the lord and that is the song that the lord has put in my mouth and he has i fear the lord i don't fear anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ, because his name is the name above all other names. He is higher. He he sits in heaven behind, beside my father and all my prayers. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that my father hears my prayers. What a privilege it is to be able to pray. In these days, we as born again believers, we can pray and we can pray that the Lord's will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And I just give all the praise and all the glory to my Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope that I hope that you are encouraged and and I hope as well that you know the dangers of all the alternative therapies that they're opening up again now. I think on the tenth of July they've been closed and now now they're opening up again. So Really, just beware, beware, and keep praying and keep trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and Amen.